Good morning. Everybody smile real big. And give God a hand. <laughs> um, this morning, I've done this before. Do me a favor. Everybody, everybody take and pick your feet up like this. All right? You got them up off the ground? Good, because it ain't going to feel so hard when I step on them. <laughs> this morning, we're going to jump right back in to talking about wisdom. Last week, I spoke about wisdom, and I specifically told you that wisdom and knowledge, they're not the same thing. Do you remember that? Yes? yes? Here's why. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't do anything with it, what good is it? Right? We've all heard that saying that knowledge is power. Have you all heard that? Knowledge is power. You know it's a lie, right? You'll never, you'll never hear that saying the same way ever again. Here's why it's wrong. Just like I just said, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't do anything with it, it don't mean a thing. Here's what it should say. Applied knowledge is power. Think about it like this. You could know everything there is to know about a car. I mean, you could be the best mechanic in the world. You could know the engine. You could know the running gear. You, you could know the electrical system. You could know the, everything there is to know about a car. And if that car breaks down, and all you do is walk around that car going, I can fix that thing. I can fix it. Hey, I can fix that car. You got people walking by you. Hey, buddy, guess what? I can fix that car. It's broke, but I can fix it. But if you don't ever do anything about it, what good does it do anybody? What good is that knowledge of knowing how to fix that car if you don't ever put it into practice? You know what I'm saying? You feel what I'm picking up? I mean, you, you, you're picking up what I'm throwing down? You understand? Nod your head. Everybody say, yes, I get it, Donnie. There we go. There we go. Now apply that concept to the Christian life. We can know everything there is to know about this book, but if you ain't putting it into practice, it don't mean a thing. Putting this into practice, putting this into action is... Wisdom. God wants us, God wants His children to have wisdom. He wants us to be in action. I've titled today's message, Fear the Lord is Wisdom. Let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I do thank you so much for every single individual here, the ones that are here in person as well as the ones that are watching. Lord, I also pray for the Holy Spirit's presence here. I welcome the Holy, presence here, Holy Spirit's presence here. I beg for the Holy Spirit's presence here, Lord. Not that the people here would, would hear what I'm talking about, but rather what the Holy Spirit wants them to hear, to see, to feel has nothing to do with us. Nate said that earlier. It's all about you, Lord. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I want us to turn in our Bibles this morning to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. If you've got your Bibles with you, 3, Proverbs 3, 13. You say, Donnie, only one verse? Don't worry, we've got a bunch of them to come. Proverbs 3, 13. You got it? It says this. Blessed are those who find wisdom. Those who gain understanding. Our text this morning, that small little scripture, is saying blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed if you find wisdom, if you gain understanding. Okay, well, how, 
How do we find wisdom? Well, I'm glad you asked. Flip over to Proverbs 8, verse 1. About three pages, two pages over. 8, verse 1. It says this, Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? Here's what that scripture is saying. If you are a believer today, if you are a Christian today, wisdom is calling out to you. That's what that scripture means. The entire chapter of Proverbs 8 is all about wisdom. And it's saying, wisdom as a child, as a believer of God, if, you, if you're a Christian here today, wisdom is calling out to you. But are you listening? Are you listening? The problem that most of us have is we get too busy to hear it. We now live in a world where social media has opened up Pandora's box and given everybody the idea that they should spend their entire day talking and airing out their opinions no matter how ignorant or ludicrous they are telling you like it is. You remember that old saying your mama used to tell you? Said you got, there's a reason why you got two ears and one mouth. You remember that? Let me tell you something. Sometimes it's just plain wise to shut up. It is. Stop talking. Stop putting all the junk on social media and just Stay quiet and listen. And you might be thinking, okay, preacher, I hear you, but where does that wisdom come from? Where does it start? What's the beginning of it? Well, I'm glad you asked that too. Let me read you this. Job 28, 28 says, The fear of the Lord, that is the wisdom. And we should shun evil. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. We can plainly see that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And not only is it the beginning, it is necessary for wisdom. But it would be very easy to hear that and say, okay, but I, what are you getting at? What, when you say the fear of the Lord, what are you thinking, or what do you mean, in pre preacher? The, what is the fear of the Lord? See, most of us want to use that word in context and think, well, Donnie, the fear of the Lord, when you hear that, you're talking about respect. Right? To respect the Lord. To respect God. And, and to a certain extent, that is true. I would say, yes, that is true. But let me tell you something. It goes a whole lot further. It goes a whole lot deeper. It means a whole lot more than just respect. It also means that we should be fearful of God. Now, I don't mean the boogeyman fear, okay? I ain't talking about the boogeyman jumping out from under your bed and scaring you to death fear. I'm talking about a reverence for God. I'm talking about being fearful out of respect for God's authority. I'm talking about being fearful... When you're outside of God's will. I'm talking about being fearful of sin. The thing lacking in today's world is the reverence for God. The thing lacking in our world today is reverence for God. Too many times I hear people say, Pre Preacher, said, how do you think we're ever going to get the world, how are we ever going to get the United States back to what it used to be? You mean tell you how? For Christians to have reverence for God. To be fearful of God. To have respect for God. You take a look around. Everywhere you look in this world right now, there is a lack of respect, there is a lack of reverence for God everywhere. If you don't respect God, then you're not going to have respect for your spouse. If you don't respect God, then you're not going to have respect for your parents. 
If you don't respect God, then you're not going to have respect for your co-workers. If you don't have respect for God, then you're not going to have respect for your boss. If you don't have respect for God, then you're not going to have respect for authority. If you don't have respect for God, then you're not going to have respect for the people that don't believe the same way as you believe. It's also called love. If you don't respect God, then you're not going to respect the people that you come in contact with every single day. I'm trying to paint you a picture. Do you see it? You understand what I'm trying to say? You want to know why the world is in the shape that it's in? Because there is no reverence, there is no respect for God. And get this, I'm not talking to unbelievers. I'm talking to Christians. I'm talking to believers today. We, as Christians, need to have a true reverence for God. Wisdom for the Christian life starts with the fear of the Lord. Hebrews 10, 31 says this, The Lord will judge His people. It is fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We often like to replace that word fear with respect because that's an easier pill to swallow. Right? You, it's easy to say, I respect God. Versus, I am fearful. And again, I ain't talking about the boogeyman fear. I'm talking about a rev reverence for God. Reverence for His authority. Reverence for who He is. He is God. God Almighty. And I am respectful. I am reverence of His authority. We should be very fearful falling under God's wrath because we are outside of His will. But more important, more important than that is that we should seek to gain favor in God's eyes. And we do that, Scripture tells us, we do that with godly wisdom. Be wise to what the fear of the Lord is. Proverbs 8.13 says, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Let me break that down, break that verse down for you. Give you a little definition of fear the Lord. Do you hate evil? Do you hate evil? If you don't, you must not fear God. Now, it's easy to say that with that first one. Let me keep going. Are you filled with pride and arrogance? I'm not just talking about being conceited. I mean, like, too proud to admit when you're wrong. You're like, oh, man, Donnie, why'd you go there? Right? Oh. Too proud to admit when you're wrong. None of us like to do that, do we? If we're too proud, if we're too arrogant, the Bible says we don't fear the Lord. What about evil behavior? You say, Pastor, I'm not evil. I didn't say you were. I said, what about your behavior? James talked about it last week in James 3.13. He said this, Who is wise and understanding among you? Show it by his good life. Pretty much show it by your good behavior. It, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. If you fear the Lord, then your behavior will glorify God. How about your speech? We say, preacher, I don't cuss. Didn't say you did. Is that the only kind of perverse speech there is? How about gossip? How about speaking will ill or negatively about your family or your friends or your co-workers or the people you don't agree with. About talking behind their back. Listen, it says if we do any of that, then God can clearly see that we don't fear Him. I'll say it again. Fearing the Lord is what is missing in this world. And Christians... It starts with us. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's keep moving. I'm only halfway done. I told you where you're going to find wisdom. I told you where it begins. I gave you a definition of wisdom. Now let me close with telling you how important it is. Turn over to chapter 8. 
if you're not already there. Let me tell you a little bit about chapter 8. The entire chapter 8 in Proverbs is about wisdom. There's a header at the beginning of chapter 8. Somebody yell it out. Wisdom calls. Solomon's writing here in chapter 8. Wisdom is calling out to you. And then there in verse 1 that we read earlier, it said what? Wisdom calls out to you. This entire chapter is all about wisdom. Make sure I get this point across. You understand when it is speaking, when this chapter is speaking, it is wisdom that is speaking, okay? Now, I don't have time to go through the entire chapter. All I want to point out uh, is verses 22 through 31. And it tells us that wisdom is so important. Hear me out. Wisdom is so important that God himself uses it. Solomon wrote this chapter as if wisdom was the only one speaking. It says this, The Lord brought me forth, me, in this scripture. He's talking about wisdom. Let me read it like this. The Lord brought wisdom forth at first of his works before the deeds of old. I, meaning wisdom, was appointed from eternity, from the beginning before the world began. When there were no oceans, I, I being the wisdom, was given birth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he, had, before he made the earth or its fields or any of the dust of the world, I was there when he set the heavens in place. Wisdom was there when God set the heavens in place. I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundaries so that the waters would not overstep its command, and when he marked out the foundations of this earth, then I was created, excuse me, I was the craftsman at his side. Talk about wisdom. I was filled with the delight day after day, rejoicing always in His presence, rejoicing in His whole world, and delighting in mankind. That entire subject matter for all of chapter 8 is all about wisdom. And verse 22 through 31 is telling us that God Himself had wisdom from the very beginning. He did not acquire it, okay? It's not something that He experienced. It is who He is. That scripture is saying that the world was created by divine wisdom. And where did that divine wisdom come from? God Almighty. God is saying that wisdom is the foundation on which all life is built. That, my friends, is how huge wisdom is. And God Himself uses wisdom. Let me tell you something. If it's good enough for God and I've got the ability to obtain it, why in the world wouldn't I want it? Why in the world wouldn't I want it? And why in the world wouldn't I want to get more of it? We see that it is absolutely necessary for us to have wisdom. Now, we didn't keep reading past verse 22. Jump to verse 35. Proverbs 8.35 says this, For whoever finds me, still talking about wisdom, for whoever finds me, whoever finds wisdom, finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find me, harms himself. All who hate me love death. Let me read that another way and, and put the word wisdom in there. For whoever finds wisdom, finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find wisdom harm himself. All who hate wisdom loves death. Woo! My goodness. That is how important wisdom is. But we as Christians, we go through this life and we're looking for the knowledge that we can obtain to help us in our circumstance, but we ain't searching out for wisdom. That's why this world is in the shape that it's in. That's why our country is in the shape that it's in. Because we haven't seeked out wisdom. And I'm talking about godly wisdom. It's knowledge put in action that God gives us. But we get so busy in our day. We get so caught up in what we've got to put on the internet. We get so busy thinking somebody's got to hear what I've got to say. My opinion matters so much that we fail to seek out how important wisdom is in our life. 
fail to see how important spiritual wisdom is. How God wants to give you that wisdom. God wants you to have spiritual wisdom. Think about this. God himself wants to impart wisdom to you. But we get so busy. And we get so caught up in what we think is what we need and what we want. That we forget to grab hold of it. God himself wants you to have wisdom. For whoever finds wisdom finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find wisdom harms himself. And all who hate wisdom loves death. So where do you fit in? Where do you fit in? Unfortunately, most Christians, and I'll put myself in this, unfortunately, most Christians are harming ourselves. You understand that? Most Christians, myself included, are harming ourselves because we don't grasp the importance of wisdom. My hope, my prayer today is that we all understand, that we get it, that we understand that we not only need wisdom as a Bible-believing individual, as a Christian, as God's child, not only do we need wisdom, but we should be searching it out like it's treasure. More valuable than silver or gold. The most important thing in your life, other than God, is seeking the wisdom that God can give you. Don't ever think that you are fine. Don't ever think that you don't need to seek out wisdom. Don't ever think that you can go through another day in this life without seeking every single day the wisdom that God can give you. That's how important it is. Wisdom will make a difference in every single thing that you do. Who you are. How you act. How you react. Have you ever made a big mess of something that you could have simply been avoided if you just used a little wisdom? Have you ever done something and immediately regretted it? How many times have you done something and went, Man, why did I do that? That was stupid. I know better than that. What was I thinking? I should have been smarter than that. I still do it. Still do it. Listen, use the knowledge that you've gained by making those mistakes. And turn it into wisdom. Ecclesiastes 7, 12 says this. The advantage of knowledge is this. That wisdom preserves the life of its possessor. You hear that? Let me read it to you again. The advantage of knowledge is this. That wisdom preserves the life of its possessor. Want to preserve your life? Get knowledge and turn it into wisdom. Seek after that wisdom, like I just said, is a treasure more valuable than silver, more valuable than gold. Say, okay, well, how do you get that? How do you get that knowledge? Again, go back to Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of that knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Does it sound familiar? Just covered it. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of that knowledge. It's the beginning of that understanding. That's the beginning. It's only the start. If you want to nurture your knowledge, you want to nurture that understanding, you want to nurture that wisdom, read the Bible every single day of your life. Every single day of your life. That's where you'll gain that wisdom needed to please God in everything you do. But let me tell you something. Gaining that knowledge is just knowledge until you put it into action. You put it into action, turns it to wisdom. And it begins with fearing the Lord. You really fear Him? And you're like me? I'm scared to do anything outside of God's will. I'm scared to death. To do anything outside of God's will. I am fearful to do anything outside of God's will. 
From my own experience, I can tell you that if you don't fear God and you do things that are outside of God's will, things don't turn out so good. It don't. In fact, there are times it turns out really bad. Your Heavenly Father will not allow you, His child, to be outside of His will. He won't. You should be fearful when that happens. You understand, you know you're outside of God's will for your life, you should be fearful. You really should. Let me make it a little more plainer for you. If you're a born-again Christian living outside of God's will, then you should be scared to death. That is wisdom. God will not allow a believer to continue to live in sin and outside of His plan for your life. He won't. If that continues, Scripture tells us He will give you over to a reprobate mind. Meaning, He will give you over to your own desires. And let me tell you something. When that happens... The devil's going to have a field day with your life. I ain't trying to step on your toes. I'm just giving you what the Lord's laid on my heart. I don't always understand why the Lord's laid stuff on my heart. It's just my me being obedient and so I'm just going to share it. We should live our life devoted to God and feel such an obligation to God that you want every part of your life to glorify Him. And that, my friends, is the beginning of wisdom. As I come to a close, do you fear God today? Now think about that. Do you fear God today? Do you fear God enough to seek His wisdom on a daily basis? Or do you just fear, enough, fear Him enough that you just don't want to get caught doing something you shouldn't be doing? Huh. The Bible says fools despise wisdom and discipline. Let me tell you something. I want God to discipline me. I want, I ask God to discipline me when I'm wrong. You know why? Because I want to do what's right. I want to glorify my Heavenly Father because I love Him. And yes, I fear Him. There's a reason for this message. I don't know what it is. Someone watching does. Someone here does. God's just asked me to say it. Fearing God. Having reverence for God. Respecting God. Respecting His authority. Is where wisdom begins. And let me tell you something. That wisdom will change this world, and it begins with Christians. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, I do thank you. Thank you for the message that you have laid on my heart. I thank you for every individual here. Lord, there's a reason for this message. There's a reason for every message. Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit work in a mighty way. And that the Holy Spirit would also be the after preacher when this message is over. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. We're not done worshiping. We're going to stand. We're going to close with a word of prayer. I want you to pay close attention as you sing this song. Everybody stand. This worship song is all about fearing the Lord. Pay attention to the words. Sing aloud. And one of the things that you should be seeking above all else is the wisdom that only God can provide. That should be a daily prayer because that's what helps us in this walk. That's our part of our testimony. That's part of our character. That is who we are as children of God.